flip it backwards and we go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, 36 through the 48th verse. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to him, These are my words, and I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Show me. I don't do gory. I mean, some people like it. I don't like gory things. My constitution is weak. This week for my son's homework, we had to look at the French Revolution. And up until the 1950s, people in France were executed by what is called beheading. And I know you guys are smart here. Well, there was this guy, Guillotin, who thought that the whole business of how executions happened in his country were choppy. They were messy, and sometimes they were not done successful and caused even more harm to the person that was being executed. And so he created this device. And because he created this device, they named it after him. It's an apparatus designed for efficiently carrying out executions and beheading. The, de the device consists of a tall, upright frame with a weighted and angled blade suspended at the top. The condemned person is secured with stocks at the bottom of the frame, positioning the neck directly below the blade. The blade is then released swiftly and forcefully, decapitating, decapitating the victim with a single clean pass so that, hey, you don't have to do it a second or a third time. Voila. So let me say, while my son was thinking and fascinated about the science of is there life beyond the decapitation, I am like, is this what public education is all about? Really, could we have missed this lesson? But he's like, show me, tell me more, show me. Jesus was inviting the disciples to look at his hands and his feet. While not exactly the beneficiary of a beheading, he did get nailed to the cross. Once again, there are some arguments about what kind of cross or how many nails, but no doubt you get the picture of someone beating nails into Jesus' hand and hammering nails into his feet while suspending him up in here until the person died from exhaustion or asphyxiation does not exactly give you the warmth and the fuzzies. This notion of someone hammering nails into the skin of Jesus and others to keep them bound to the cross is a little bit disturbing to me. So when Jesus shows the disciples his hands and his feet, this is not for a pedicure. And he has undergone extreme physical harm to his body. This is no pretty sight, but it also is how the disciples know that it's Jesus after all. Sometimes what people have to show us isn't pretty. 
Last week, Adam Toledo, a 13-year-old boy, was shot in the early morning in an alley by a Chicago police officer. We know this because the officer was wearing a body cam, and this week videotapes of a pursuit were released to the public, you and I. So even though the videotape was slowed down for those of us to watch, we would get to the point of seeing a young child running down the alley with an alleged perhaps gun on him, one police officer in pursuit, yelling at him to stop, him eventually stopping, turning around and raising his own hands only to be shot. The police had been called to the scene because of gunshots and when they arrived there was a 21 year old male which they were able to apprehend quicker in Adam Toledo. A pastor friend of mine once said that his dad said nothing good happens in the streets after midnight. He said his dad instilled this in him growing up. Son, whatever you do, handle your business, make sure you are in the house by 12. And so he said this always governed his life. And I thought, oh, sometimes I'm out after 12. What's the big deal? But I thought about it. Ain't nothing good outside after a certain hour. And so I got to ask myself, maybe you don't, what is a 12, 13-year-old child doing outside with a gun at 2.30 a.m. in the morning? Why is he with a 21-year-old male in the streets? Why isn't this baby in bed? Even if it were spring break, or even if it were a weekend, what are our kids doing in the streets? Because ain't nothing good out there after 12 a.m. And yet they are. Sometimes we are shown things that we don't want to see. Sometimes we are shown violence we want to turn away from. We want to look the other way. We don't like feeling uncomfortable. We want to put distance between us and the wounds of Jesus' hands or the gunshots in the faint night or the murder of a little boy. We want our security blankets around us to tuck us in. And if the person is related to us, we want to say he or she wasn't raised that way. This behavior is suddenly odd to us. Anything to wash our hands or absolve ourselves of any blame or accountability. Jesus shows us his wounds, but everyday people, everyday people are showing us their brokenness. Everyday people are showing us they are hurting badly and they are scared. And maybe instead of driving us apart, what shows up should bring us together. Brene Brown says it is in our brokenness and our vulnerability that we find connections with each other. She says the only way to form relationships is through showing others the more visible, less exposed parts of ourselves. Years ago, my cousin died of cancer after an 11 year battle. And that death was hard on our family, but cancer runs on that side of the family. Left behind was her nine-year-old daughter, and in her early 20s, they detected cancer in her breast. She embraced aggressive treatment, having both of her breasts removed, and then she entered into a strong, aggressive chemo and radiation therapy. She embraced the treatment all the nine yards. About this time, about five years ago, there was a small movement of women who began to show their scars after breast cancer. My cousin was one of them. Again, I thought to myself, well, this is gory. Why are they showing their breasts? Like, please, just keep it to yourself. We don't want to see your scarred breasts. But these women had battled cancer and found nothing embarrassing about their scars that they had endured. What was gone, what was left their surgery, the cuts on skin, why not? Why should they have to hide for people's comfort? It challenged me that here were women, women willing to show us what they had gone through, opening the door to other women who would go through it. My younger cousin was perhaps showing me the way. Besides being about two meetings every night this week, this week was a hard week because of this senseless violence that is happening across America, not just in Chicago. And this week, I did not get to look away, but the gravity 
of the killings that are happening in our country pulled me under. I walked into a police department this week myself, and up on the wall in the police department is this big plaque that says Code of Ethics for Police Officers. The words were beautiful, you guys. It was almost as beautiful as the Bible. I'm going to read you just a few of those words. My fundamental duty is to serve mankind, to safeguard lives and property, protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and peaceful against violence or disorder. The constitutional rights of all men to liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied as an example to all. I will maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule. Develop self-restraint and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and deed in both my personal and official life. I'm amazed that up on the wall, these beautiful code of ethics, I'm like, wow. And yet, as followers of Christ, we too have code of ethics to love our God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And they're beautiful words. Except, are we, are we living them? Oh, are, are, are they really living this? Are we really living the code of ethics? After Jesus had shown them his own scars in ministry, he proclaimed, there is still work to do. And not only have you been witnesses, but you are to be witnesses. You are to be disciples, letting people show you their wounds, but in turn, showing them the way. There's much to be seen, but we are peacemakers and we are justice bearers. A colleague of mine visited a teenager in the hospital after she had been violently raped. The girl was despondent and devastated. Anyone could see that. And after sharing and showing what was done to her, my colleague said, what happened to you was horrific and no human should have to endure what you went through. I'm so sorry that this violation occurred to your body and trust in your heart. But I'm here to let you know, younger sister, there's still so much more goodness and righteousness in you for tomorrow. Our scars are a part of who we are. C-section mothers, amputee veterans, breast cancer survivors. By the way, two years ago, my cousin had the most elegant and beautiful five-year party because what doctors say is if the cancer doesn't return for five years, you are declared cancer-free. She had this beautiful party on the lawn to celebrate because she still got a story. The scars on Jesus' body are a reminder that he went to the cross for us. This isn't just some philosophical story. Jesus was killed, and it was violent, and it was real, and as awful as the act of violence was, he would not come down from the cross. He acted out of love and care for us, and aren't we so glad that he did? But you got to see it for what it was, the lowest of humanity unleashed on a good God, our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The scars tell us a story of death and resurrection and what it means to live one's life dedicated to God and what God loves most, God's creation, sold out. Show me your scars and I'll show you mine. Show me the wounds inflicted on your body and I will show you God is not through with us yet. Show me the violence perpetrated on you and I will say you are not defined by the worst moments in your life. You might be scarred, but that doesn't totally define you. Show me your vulnerability and I will show you the one who will not walk away. Show me what's holding you back and I will show you the one who can help move you forward. Show me what's got you stopped and I will show you a way maker. Won't God do it? 
Won't God do it? God is good. Show me your pain and I will show you a healer. Show me what keeps you up in the middle of the night. And I promise to show you a Jesus who will not look away. Show me the road stops and I'll show you a God who only wants the best for you. Show me your past. And I will show you a God who wants to write the next chapter. There are more chapters to be written. Show me your ugly and I will show you a God who can make beauty out of ashes. Show me your anxiety and I will show you a heart regulator. Show me your brokenness and I will show you a God who never, never gives up on us. Ever. Show me the part of you that you're ashamed about. And I will show you a, a God who's seen it all. A couple of decades ago, I got to go to Ghana. And I got to go to the northernmost part of Ghana, a village called Tamale. And I got to stay in this village. And one of the beauties about this village is there wasn't any electricity and so people went to bed when they really should go to bed. And at night it got super, super quiet. And I was able to walk out and for once hear the stillness of the night. And I was able to look up and see the scars. And I felt in that moment, I felt like God was with me. And y'all, I decided to get in my birthday suit. And it was a beautiful moment. And I was there and I was like, God, I'm here. And I showed God just who I was. And that moment was beautiful. Standing there before God and the universe and showing God. You all show God. God has seen it all already anyway. Things happen and stuff goes awry. The unspeakable occurs and life doesn't feel fair. Violence happens to us. We get dealt a bad set of cards. The scales of justice are in balance. Violence has been with us for a while and it has never been pretty. Some of us would prefer not to look. We prefer to go on with our lives. The eye for the eye tactic is not working and we gotta declare a different message, one dipped in love and spun in grace, baptized in water and inviting us to wholeness. We get to be a part of an orchestra playing wonderful music. We get to be a part of a love revolution proclaiming that the reach of God is infinite, that your ugly God can reach. God's love is infinite, infinite. There is nothing you can show us that God's love will not reach. The disciples were happy to see just Jesus, even the gory hands and the gory feet, the wounds and the scars, because they told a story. They told a story. Show God all of you, because God's seen it all anyway. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I believe that our country is in trouble. And there really aren't words for it. But Lord, help us to remain unified and help us in our own small way to declare love, to declare love as the way. Help us to take our little bit of love and put it on display daily. To take our little bit of love and share it with others take a little bit of love and sign some advocacy or petition bill that comes along our way. Take a little bit of our love and march in a protest if we feel so inclined. Take a little bit of our love and do not allow bigotry to take place in our midst. Take a little bit of our love and remember what it's like to be vulnerable. Lord, show us Show us the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.